Thank you for listening to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. We are heading into the final week of the regular season, and this might be the toughest week of all to pick, mainly because of all the different scenarios. You got teams that actually might lose on purpose just to get a lesser seed so they can play a team that they know they can beat. It's crazy, but it does happen. Or you could get a team that is out of the playoffs, but they want to put forth a fight, a homestand, because they know that this is the team they're going forward with next year. They're just going to add pieces to it, but keep everybody in place. So my advice is just do your research. If you're going to place a bet this week, make sure you just look at all the angles. And of course, if you're betting a four o'clock game, make sure you check out the one o'clock games to make sure those don't impact that game. Whoever wins and loses at one o'clock, because I've seen that happen before too. And then your pick is complete shit. They end up resting their starters and you lose a ton of money. So just be aware of that. With that being said, let's get into the picks. Pittsburgh minus three and a half versus the Ravens over under set at 36 and a half. I'm going to go over Ravens win a cover because I think the backups for the Ravens can fight against Mason Rudolph and the Steelers. Not much more to it than that. I just really don't respect the Steelers starting group. They've played like backups at times. So why can't the Ravens who are trying to go into the playoffs on fire, why wouldn't their backups perform? Next game. Houston plus one versus Indy over under set at 47 and a half. I'm going to go under Indy wins and covers. It's not really like a reason. I just think that CJ Stroud being a rookie, obviously his weapons aren't 100% and Indy's at home. I think the offense for Indy can put some stuff together and then defensively, I think they'll be ready. CJ Stroud's not going to be superhuman in every game he plays. It's not going to happen. And this is a division game. Both teams need it for the playoffs. Wild card. I think Indy puts forth a fight. Next game, Atlanta plus three versus New Orleans. Over under set at 42 and a half. I'm going to go over. I got New Orleans to win and cover because I think people are going to roll with Atlanta because of their weapons on offense. And I'm just going to roll with New Orleans at home because I think they're going to get it done and put up a little bit of a fight. Um, obviously, both teams suck. There's not a whole lot of science to this game. There's I can't sit here and break it down play by play with you because – both teams have so many issues, but New Orleans being at home, end of the season, pride, the fact that players are going to be fighting for spots, that's why I'm rolling with them in this game. Next game, so neither team needs it, doesn't matter, because Cleveland can't get out of their seating in the playoffs. They're stuck at that spot, and you know, obviously since he just blows elephant balls, so over under 39, I'm going to go over. And I got Cincy to win and cover because I really think Cleveland's just going to take it easy. They, It's like they knew they were going to have this week off all along. I think Cincy has a lot of things that they want to prove with their backups and people that want to fight for the you know roster spots, especially Browning at quarterback if he ends up suiting up playing and, and 100% healthy. That's what I think. So, again, shit game, but – that's my line of thinking. Give Cleveland six if you want, but it's not like Cleveland has a ton of depth to begin with. Next game, the Jags need this game, but Tennessee's just not going to roll over. Jags minus five and a half versus the Titans over under set at 40. I'm going to go over. Titans cover, Jags win. If Tannehill plays and he gets another week of practice in, I think that's actually going to help the Titans in this type of game. And look, I mean, the Jags have had a ton of problems. And I think Pride comes into factor, especially with what we saw from Vrabel this past week. He said, losing, fuck, it sucks. He came out to the media and said that. He's so pissed. So I don't think Tennessee at home is just going to roll over last game of the year against the division team. Plus, again, the Jags have had so many things that have been a problem. The offensive line, Trevor Lawrence getting hurt, the receivers not always being on the same page, the defense not having a ton of depth. I really think the Titans could surprise people and put up a fight in a game that really doesn't matter to them as far as the playoffs go. But for the Jags, it definitely does. So that's why I have them winning. But I think that could be a trap game. Next game, we got Minnesota plus three versus Detroit. Over under set at 45 and a half. I'm going to go under. And I got Minnesota to win and cover. It's crazy. I know that Detroit kind of needs this for the seeding. Either way, Detroit's in the playoffs. It doesn't matter, but I think they actually could move up one spot. But regardless, um, I think that Detroit has a ton of problems on both sides of the football. 
First of all, Jared Goff is a turnover machine. The offensive line at times hasn't played up to what they're good at. I know they've been great at run blocking, but Jared Goff, as far as pass blocking goes, they've been under a lot of pressure. And I think that factors into this game. And the fact that a lot of the receivers for Detroit, like Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta have been great, but Williamson, the rest of these guys really haven't come into their own and stepped up. So Detroit's kind of like that team that was supposed to be great, but they're just good. They're going to be in the playoffs, but they're going to lose at some point. We know that. And again, this being a division game, I think Minnesota just fights. And on top of that, the Detroit defense, like that front seven, I'm still not sold on. Still not sold on it. So I think whoever goes out there and plays quarterback for Minnesota might have a little bit of time on their hands to throw the football. And again, they're going to be fighting for roster spots. This isn't a Minnesota team that's given up at any time of the year. They fought strong even when they lose. So I think we see that in this game. Next matchup, Jets plus two and a half versus the Patriots. Over, under set at 30 and a half. I'm going to go over. And I got the Jets to win and cover because I think everybody's going to think the Patriots, after they just put a good stand against the Buffalo Bills to some degree, that they're going to have this puncher's chance against the Jets and Bill Belichick is going to go out on a high note. But I don't think so. I really don't. I, I think the Jets defense, even though it's kind of given up, it's not really going to take much for them to embarrass whatever quarterback the Patriots put out there. So Jets get it done. They win and cover because of that reason. Not even with the offense. I mean, both of these offenses are equally, completely, disgustingly bad. But that Jets defense, I think that they're going to have a little bit of pride. And they're not going to let Billy Zappi or whoever the fuck they put out there play better. Next game, Tampa needs it. Tampa minus five and a half versus Carolina. Over under set at 37 and a half. I'm going to go over. Tampa wins, but Carolina covers with that five and a half because I just don't see him giving up. It's the final week of the year. More or less, most of what's in place for Carolina is going to be brought over into next year. And I just can't imagine them at home just laying down and just saying, yeah, let, let our division rivals let, in the NFC. just We'll just let them take this win and, and get a better spot and just ride off into the sunset. I, I don't think so. I think Carolina is going to put up a fight and do something here. And that's almost a touchdown, five and a half, I'm just saying. In a division game with a team that doesn't want to lay down, it means a lot in the NFL. That means they're going to come out, they're going to hit Baker Mayfield. You start hitting him, a lot of things can go wrong. So I'm banking on that in that one. Next game, obviously, neither of these teams amount to much. Chicago plus three versus Green Bay over under side of 44. I'm going to go under, and I got Chicago to win and cover. I know a lot of people might be high on Green Bay this past week because of what they saw, but – I'm rolling with Justin Fields, his dynamic play. Bottom line is, I'd rather have Justin Fields than Jordan Love. And both these teams suck. And obviously, Chicago has more weapons. So I'm rolling with that side. Next game, money pick, Dallas minus 13 versus Washington over under set at 45 and a half. I'm going to go over. And I got Dallas to win a cover because they are fighting for seating. They are fighting for the, an extra spot in the seating ranks. I think Philly might be like right on their ass end, a win below. And then obviously San Fran, um, I think they beat out Dallas either way. But I think that Philly could mess with Dallas in this. So I don't think Dallas wants to risk anything. Washington is a crap football team. And I know a lot of you guys are probably going to think maybe it's a trap game. Maybe we should take Washington with the points. But I think that's just what Vegas wants you to do. And I'm just going to make it simple. I mean, I'm not going to overcomplicate things this week. I, I don't think it's a comp – there's going to be some traps, like that Baltimore-Pittsburgh game, but I don't think this is one of them. I think Dallas just cleans up on a team that doesn't want to play for Ron Rivera that's completely depleted. I mean, you guys have seen Sam Howell. Is that somebody that you would want? I, I mean, I wouldn't even want him sitting next to me on the bench on a college team, let alone a pro starter. I don't know what Washington was thinking. Maybe, I don't know. I, I really, really don't know. Maybe Sam Howell has some rich ancestry or is related to the owner somehow, and they let him come all this way. But he fucking sucks. He is never going to be a starting quarterback in this league. So for me, I just think Dallas cleans up and shows Washington who's boss. 
Next game, KC plus three versus Chargers. Over under side 36, going to go over. I got a KC to win and cover. Neither team need this, obviously. KC can't move up or down in the, in the rankings. And the Chargers are just shit. So, basically, I think KC's backups can do it. That's how sad the Chargers are right now. And I don't think KC is going to completely rest their starters. I mean, I, I don't expect to see Mahomes or Kelsey or anything. But I think on defense, they actually might. They actually might play some of their starters just to prove a point. And offensively, you still have Andy Reid, who's a masterful play caller. Nicole Harmon's back. This is probably a game where he's going to be able to get into the swing of things. I think KC can do it. Because, again, when you look at a team like Pittsburgh, when you look at a team like the Chargers at this point of the year when there's no point for them to do anything, the backups, like, at times for some of these teams, like, they they can match what they put out because they're so bad. It's sad, but, guys, that's the truth. I mean, Mason Rudolph, I mean, you guys have seen the Chargers. Completely pathetic this year. Next game, so both teams need this for seeding purposes. Rams are plus three versus San Fran over under set at 42 and a half. I'm going to go over. San Fran wins and covers if they – if they go all in in this game, I think eventually the reality bell comes in. It, it doesn't happen all the time. We know it. Weeks go by where mystical shit happens that we wouldn't expect. But San Fran is easily the better team. The Rams are lucky that the NFC is weak as it is for them to get to this spot to even be in the playoffs. I'll admit Sean McVay with these receivers, great play calling. Okay, I give you credit but you do not have a solid defensive football team. You do not have a solid offensive line. You just don't have it when it comes to these better teams. That's why I'm rolling with Sam Fran in this game. Let's not get fooled by, like, not don't overfool yourself. Sometimes there's trap games, but then there's sometimes where everybody thinks that the Rams got a chance. I don't think so. If Sam Fran bench, benches their starters, okay, whatever then I'm wrong. I mean, then it is it is what it is. But if San Fran's going in to win this game, they're going to do it. Next game, next money pick, Eagles minus five versus the Giants over under set of 41. I'm going to go over, Eagles win and cover. Again, because eventually reality comes back and sinks down. Okay, the Eagles suffered against Arizona. But again, guys, that's Kyler Murray. That's not Tommy fucking DeVito or Tyrod Taylor. I think this Eagles defensive line, gets this game done. They're not going to let the Giants embarrass them at this point of the year. And obviously the Eagles need this for seeding. I think they could actually still win their division if the Cowboys lose. I think that's how it would go. So that's why this is important. Um, obviously, if Dallas loses earlier in the day, then I guess, depending on when the games are played, I think all these are at four, though, so the NFL kind of made this work out pretty good. But at halftime, things could change drastically, so be prepared for that. Like, if Dallas just gives up, then the Eagles are going to go hard. But if Dallas wins, and the Eagles will go, and the Eagles will go hard in that game and try to take it. So we just got to see how it plays out. But um, I just think the Eagles dominate. The Giants are a joke when it actually comes down to it. Next game, Seattle minus three versus Arizona, over under set at 47. I'm going to go under. And I got Seattle to win and cover. I'm going to make it a money pick because, again, I just think reality comes down. Um, Kyler Murray doesn't have very many weapons to throw to. And Seattle has a fucking good defense. They got a good secondary. They got speed rushers up front. They got athletic linebackers. And they have good offensive play calling. And Arizona sucks on so many levels. They've gotten lucky. They battled against Philly, but I don't think it's going to work this week. Seattle takes this, and um, obviously they need this for the wild card spot. And we'll end on our last game and last money pick, Buffalo minus three versus Miami over under set at 50 and a half. I'm going to go under. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. Buffalo wins the covers. you got Miami. Xavier Howard is out. Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill are banged up. Obviously, Jalen Waddle dealing with a plethora of issues. Who knows if he's even going to play 100% of the snaps. And then Tyreek Hill, he's got that ankle issue. So unless in the Bradley Chubb, IR, out for the year. So unless we think that Tyreek Hill is going to 
heal up, come into this game, and completely take over. I don't really see how this is going to happen. I think even Raheem Mostert is hurt for this game. And the most that's going on with the Buffalo Bills is Josh Allen has a sore neck. The rest of the Buffalo Bills are healthy, ready to go. This might even be the game that we see Von Miller rip out a little bit. But that being said, again, I'm going to repeat myself. I'm not going to overcomplicate simple things. Who wins, Buffalo or Miami? Miami's got all these hurt players. Buffalo's on an upswing with really not a whole lot of injuries. Rolling with the Buffalo Bills, and they've already blown up Miami this past year, early in the year. So with that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. Of course, you guys know the same formula is going to continue with the playoffs. I'm going to have the picks up a week in advance or you know, a few days in advance of the playoffs every week. I'll find a way to get it done, and uh, we'll hopefully win some games. Um, I just want to add a side note. This is irrelevant, but it's when it comes to football. But I love movies, TV shows, stuff like that. I know a lot of people in general, even if they're not big movie buffs, People have Netflix because it's good for the children. Like everybody can find something to watch on Netflix. So there are two shows on there that I want you guys to watch because usually they don't do this. They don't bring shows over from HBO and put them on there, but they did this this time. So if you guys want to watch some serious shit, Band of Brothers is on Netflix right now. It's 10 episode series about World War II. Absolutely fucking amazing. David Schwimmer is only in it for a couple episodes, but his performance in the first episode, his 30, first 30 minutes of that first episode of Band of Brothers, you're going to probably rewatch that about 30 times because it's so well acted and so realistic. It's amazingly good. One of the best I've ever seen in terms of taking over a role. So make sure you go check that out on Netflix as well as Six Feet Under. It came out in 2001 on HBO. I don't know how Netflix put it out there all of a sudden, but it's kind of going under the radar. People, I think, are afraid to check it out. But, wow, what a fucking great show. It's going to make you look at life completely different. Trust me when I say that. Just give it a chance. Give it a few watches, and you'll get right into it. So with that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. I'll see you next week for playoff week, it looks like. Cannot wait.